Hi guys! Well, this is your last lecture that you're going to get from me this semester. I'm sorry that it had to end in a virtual fashion. I really miss seeing you guys and conversing with you and talking about all these topics that I think are so interesting and are so pertinent to our field at this time. Um, I just want to again extend to you guys if anyone ever wants to come back into one of the classes just to kind of get that more um, collaborative experience. The door is always open for you guys and I'm always here for you as you go out into your careers and um, work on digital media. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm here to support you and help you in your success. Um, and I just wanted to say I'm really proud of you guys. I know this has been a tough semester and no one anticipated what what was going to happen, but you guys have handled it really well and um, I'm very, very proud of you and to all the graduating seniors, congratulations and I look forward to celebrating with you in the fall when we get to do our graduation ceremony. So without further ado, um, let's get started on Yelp. So whether you're a business owner or a customer, Yelp allows you to express your viewpoint by writing reviews, reacting to reviews as a business owner, creating a profile for your company, planning events, or discussing various topics. I'm sure many of you guys have been on Yelp before. You've either used it as a consumer, maybe as a business owner, or managing someone's business for them. But Yelp has become incredibly important, if not incredibly frustrating for business owners, but incredibly important when it comes to the local business. 45% uh, of consumers are likely to check Yelp reviews before visiting a business, and 35% of people searching on Yelp will make a visit to the site they checked within 24 hours. So Yelp is definitely in the research vernacular for everyone who is going out, especially to a restaurant. Um, so that makes Yelp crucial to the success of small and medium-sized businesses. But first, let's have a little laugh. This place is Bolinio. Chicken nuggets be crispy like you never see. I tasted one and I was like, what? Are you serious, Wendy? Mean girls working the fryers, though. This one chick wouldn't even let me hug. I was like, please, you ugly anyway. I really love this place. I have been going since it opened. I had the hugest crush on the daughter of the owner and I would come in after class when I was in junior high and try and talk to her. But the skate store next door opened up and all the skaters got to her and one of them got her pregnant. I never saw her again. Oh yeah, the donuts are good and they will usually hook you up with a free donut to try. Ford's Theater. Abel was murdered here. Would not recommend. My lover Karen and I adore this place so much we are considering holding our commitment ceremony here. Hope they do weddings. Almost two years out now and haven't been back. As I said you made 250 you didn't deserve. And lost out on a couple thousand dollars I would have spent there by now. Way to win over your customers. Coming up on four years now of not having been back since they robbed me of money to buy a glass of water despite having been drinking actual alcohol beverages all evening. They've lost plenty of my money. It has been five years now since I spent a single dollar in this place. They've lost a couple of thousand now in sales to me. I hope the three bucks they made on the glass of tap water they charged me for is paying their bills. God knows I'm not. How you gonna call yourself a McDee's if you ain't got no ice cream? Don't you know I'm a mad moody emotional woman with f up over us who needs me a McFlurry? Why you gotta go and do this to me? Sobs. They gave my nuggets to somebody else and I'm very offended because I'm unearthly beautiful and could not be confused with any mortal. To be honest I found Chef McDonald lacking in presentation. First of all they served my food in a paper sack. Pictured on said sack was a character named the Hamburglar. I found him to be tacky and tasteless and his demeanor in stark contrast to the atmosphere of family food I had come in search of. My plan to subjugate this planet with pestilence and disease is a long and trying process. I must congratulate this McDonald's as a force much darker than myself as it inflicts far more personal, moral and physical decay than I could ever think of. Together we may rule this galaxy. I think a linear and next can stick their e-tickets up their butt. They charge a mortgage payment for the privilege to eat in hyped up restaurants that are overrated. Suggestion to owner, get over yourself, Marty. For the price I paid here I could have flown to Switzerland, rented a chalet and had a private chef for a week. But no instead the all my recently divorced friends decided to go to this Frankenstein restaurant. 
why would I want to eat edible styrofoam? What a damn waste. Part 1. The experience started after a long rainy drive at the dark roads of the Meadowwood Estate. After getting lost we finally arrived at the restaurant. We ended up waiting for our table for 45 minutes. Actually we are still waiting. The entire kitchen and wait staff saw an ice cream truck and ran outside leaving me alone in the restaurant. 10 minutes later they all came back with ice cream cones. I still can't believe this actually happened. There was a chick in the parking lot who asked me for a ride to the bus station and got pretty pissed off when I said no. As I was leaving after chicken, she was getting into a pickup truck with a guy who looked like the BTK killers. That was doing that slow creepy redneck laugh. The one that sound like ha ha ha. When the lady saw me exiting the restaurant she shouted, look who got a ride now bitch, and flashed her tips at me. Four stars. As far as jails go, this is the creme de la creme. First off, you don't even need a ride here. They pick you up from anywhere in the county. Sometimes they even get you out of bed and bring you and it's free of charge. I ate there about 3 hours ago and now I have diarrhea. As far as Chinese buffets go, this one is pretty good. I must downgrade this to 3 stars after last bus I was on ran over 2 pedestrians and kept going. Dr. Lee is very professional. I had an embarrassing anal fissure that I put off having inspected, but I'm glad he was able to take a look at it. He didn't make any off remarks and was not only knowledgeable but was also not overly academic when talking about it. It put me at ease. Edit. Whoever voted that this post is funny is an insensitive jerk. Edit 2. Stop voting funny. Best place to load up on cheap beans and rice while the girl you've casually been screwing has to take her pet rabbit to the emergency vet around the corner. Because it got into her weed stash while you were casually screwing her and you don't have the balls to just completely leave her there and trek back to Manhattan. Because she is kind of freaky and the sex is good. Enough to keep having. But still you need to eat and there's nothing to do at the emergency vet wait. Since a pot eating bunny is not really class 1 trauma and you don't know her well enough or care too much about a damn rabbit that runs freely through the apartment and eats. Weep to stick around and hold her hand or anything so you split the difference and chow down and maybe it is just the pot talking. But Jesus Christ. I wish I could give this place a higher rating, but the new ownership is terrible. Bowers are inconsistent. Why is this place always closed when I want to get a wax? Terrible customer service. Lady at front desk always crying and one time I heard her scream at another lady to shut up for 5 minutes straight. And she wasn't even saying anything. Not family friendly business at all. Weird meth smell. I went to this restaurant and liked the food, but then the server leaned over me and whispered, would you like a side of death with that? Then he took my fata jimmy, and formed a pentagram on my table. No one acknowledged me after that. Don't go here, or do, whichever. Don't try the pizza, it's so good you will come back every day. It completely ruined my social life cause every night I only want to go there. I hate this place. This is a clean, relatively easy access fuel stop located just off I-40 on historic Route 66. Fuel prices here are competitive with gas bathroom coffee gift shop all in one. Route 66 on our way to Santa Fe. Manager was in nice and friendly. It's a fucking truck stop. <laughs> I don't know if it's just the fake voice or the music behind it, but I die laughing every time I see that. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> So let's get into it. Yelp Fast Facts. Yelp was founded in 2004 by two former PayPal employees to help people find great local businesses like dentists, hairstylists, and mechanics. However, it is to note that Yelp didn't become profitable until 2014. That's 10 years later. Yelp makes money by selling ads to local businesses in the form of targeted local ads, premium placements on search pages and competitor pages, and traditional banner ads on mobile and desktop. Yelp has more than 178 million unique visitors monthly across mobile, desktop, and app platforms, and has 184 million reviews worldwide. So who is on Yelp? Small, local business owners, customers looking for a recommendation for places in a certain area, essentially everyone is on Yelp. According to the latest Yelp demographic stats, the U.S. Yelp community consists of three major age groups with very close percentage. 33% of users are between 18 and 34 years of age. 
36% are between 35 and 54, and 31% are 55 plus. About 53.7% of Yelp users are female, with 46.3% male. So this really mirrors... <laughs> Sorry, that was my dog. <laughs> this really mirrors the population as a whole. Um, as you'll see from the graph, the majority of Yelp users have some college education, but not necessarily a graduate degree. So, hey, Yelp users are just like us. <laughs> Um, and half of Yelp users earn more than $100,000 annually. Hey, maybe they're not just like us. Yelp is available in 32 countries across the world. However, most Yelp users are counted in the U.S. and in Canada. Um, U.S. visitors account for 90% of all visitors to the website in the last 30 days. So why do people use Yelp? Well, for reassurance, first of all, before you pay your good money for a service, you want to make sure that other people think it's good too, and the numbers definitely prove this. 45% of customers are likely to check Yelp reviews before visiting a business. Four out of five Yelp users are ready to buy when attempting to visit a Yelp page. 35% of people searching on Yelp will make a visit to the site they check within 24 hours, and 92% of users make a purchase after visiting the platform. The top three most reviewed categories on Yelp are restaurants, home local services, and shopping. And if you do the math, that makes up over half of the total reviews on the platform in those three categories specifically. So let's talk about the star rating. One star can make a lot of difference in a business's bottom line when it comes to Yelp. A Harvard Business Review study found that by adding one additional star to an overall Yelp rating, it increased business revenue by five to nine percent. Let me repeat that. A study by Harvard Business Review found that by adding just one additional star for go, going from a three to a four star or a four to a five star review, that it averaged an increase in business revenue of five to nine percent. And that's because 91% of 18 to 34 year olds trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. And a business needs to have at least a 3.3 star rating for consumers to consider engaging with them. So if you are lower than a 3.3 star, they will automatically bounce to the next person. But the stars aren't everything. What they found is that what reviews say is actually the most important factor in people deciding to visit your business, followed by the review rank and then the number of total reviews. So how do people use Yelp? Well, on mobile, of course, because that's where everyone is. Yelp boasts an average of 92 million unique mobile users per month. 80% of all searches and 76% of all ad clicks on Yelp make, are made via a mobile device. And as of June 2019, 72% of all new Yelp reviews were submitted via mobile devices, with visitors spending 3.39 minutes per day on average on Yelp's page. So now that we know a little bit about the platform as a whole and who's using it and why they're using it, let's talk about Yelp for Business. Um, as much as we want to, we can't afford to ignore crowdsourced review sites anymore. Um, little story, personal story for you guys. When I first started teaching at Cal State Long Beach, I didn't have a Rate My Professor page because I was too new of a teacher. And I had debated on creating one and encouraging students to review me. And I had talked to my classes about this and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, and I talked to some of the my fellow professors and um, essentially the, the vibe is, oh, ignore, rate my professor, it's dumb, whatever. Um, and one professor even said, I thought this was really funny, she said, I'm a journalist and I don't trust anonymous sources and all the sources on um, rate my professor are anonymous. I thought that was really funny. So eventually I just decided to let it be um, and I didn't do anything with it and eventually someone created a page for me 
and I um, caught wind of it, so I checked it, and I had a couple decent reviews on there, and I was like, oh, that's nice, um, but I still didn't really do anything about it. So fast forward to my summer break one year, and I had been drinking a bit at a barbecue, <laughs> and one of my friends my age had gone back to college to finish his degree, and he was talking to me about his school and he said oh my god have you heard of this new site rate my professor it's amazing I was like that's not a new site I know all about that I was like I have great reviews on rate my professor cue to me opening up rate my professor on my phone and seeing two negative reviews just ripping me apart on there <laughs> and needless to say my ego got put in check real fast um and then, I'm not proud of this, but I'm going to be honest with you, I started drunk texting some of my students I knew that liked me and begging them to put up a review for me. Um, fast forward to apparently I texted too many former students because my profile actually got taken down because they thought I was being spammed. Um, but it's back up now. And I have uh, better reviews with those two stinkers still on there. Um, the moral of this story is if you don't take control of your online presence, someone else will. And it's usually not in a positive way. So now I practice what I preach, what I tell you guys. And I ask my students who like my teaching um, to please review me on Write My Professor. And I try to keep a closer eye on it because I'm sitting here preaching to you guys that you need to watch your online presence and take control of it. Yet I did not do that myself and I paid the price. So I hope you enjoyed that embarrassing little story. And I hope if you like me, you'll go review me on Write My Professor. <laughs> so should your business be on Yelp? Yes, absolutely. If you're a local business... If you um, rely on word of mouth for your business, if SEO is important to your business strategy, um, if your customers utilize online reviews for purchasing decisions, which most do, and if user feedback is important to your business, you should absolutely be on Yelp. Um, it's worth noting that Yelp uses an automated software to recommend the most helpful and reliable reviews for the Yelp community among the millions that they get. So essentially, they use an algorithm to show you which businesses, once you do your query, will pop up. The software looks at dozens of different signals, including various measures of quality, reliability, and activity on Yelp. Therefore, your SEO on Yelp is really important for you to be found. Um, so take those tips we learned from Robert Mushan, apply them to your Yelp page, and um, really make that work for you because SEO is really, really important with all the businesses that are on Yelp. Also, um, note Yelp claims that the process um, in their algorithm has nothing to do with whether a business advertises with them or not. Um, that's what they say. I don't know if that's true. I will say from experience of um, helping my husband with his construction company, doing their marketing, we were on Yelp. And I would incessantly get calls from them to advertise, like once a month at least. So they are very aggressive with their advertising, so just know that going in. Okay, so you're working for a company. They want to improve their social media presence. They're a local business. You think Yelp is a great place. What do you do? The first thing you're going to do is claim and complete their profile. Start with the essentials, basic business information, location, website, hours. Hours are a key one to have on there, etc. And then you want to encourage reviews. Answer the customer questions before they ask. So also, what are the cross streets? What are your hours? What's the nearest subway station? What's your average wait time? Put all that information in there, and then it'll help not only like minimize the calls that your company gets for this information, but it's also going to really help with your SEO. And the more complete your profile is on Yelp, the better you will rank. Um, and finally, post pictures. Users stay 2.5 times longer on a Yelp page that has images. All right, so you're on Yelp. You've created your page. You filled it out. It looks amazing. You're starting to get your reviews. And um, what do you do? How do you get your reviews? What do you do once you have your reviews? What if you get a bad review? We'll talk about that in a minute. So the first thing to do is make sure that you're being consistent and checking Yelp at least once a week. Yelp's a hard one because you don't necessarily go on there and engage, but you definitely don't want to miss those reviews once they come in. Um, Yelp recommends that you respond to the reviews. If someone is taking time out of their day to review you, you should thank them. Um, I think 
you know, do that as you see fit and is best for your brand. You can utilize these reviews and quote them on your website and other marketing materials. So that's a great thing to have. Um, but keep in mind, this is key, you cannot incentivize people for positive reviews. Again, you cannot, as a business, incentivize people for positive reviews. It violates Yelp's policies. And I'm sure you're saying, but wait, I've been to a restaurant or a nail salon and there's something that says, give us a review and we'll give you a free appetizer. Review us on Yelp and we'll do this and we'll do that. That's fine. What you can't do, the key is you can't ask for a positive review. You can incentivize customers for a review, but you cannot influence them on how they're going to review you. So if, if they give you a shitty review, then you still have to give them that incentive. Um, so in summation, summary, in summary, you cannot incentivize customers for a positive re review. You can incentivize them for a review period, but asking someone to give you a five-star positive review on Yelp for that incentive goes against Yelp's policies. Will they ever find out? Mm, maybe not, but just keep that in mind. Also, Yelp uses an automated filter, a proprietary algorithm to hide certain reviews in order to display the most helpful and honest ones or what they deem the most helpful and honest. Um, that can be tough for businesses because that's not necessarily the most positive ones. Sometimes it's just the ones that um, have people that review a lot on Yelp. Um, it's a lot of different factors and that filter can really hinder because people don't realize that it's a filter. Um, and you can see on here, it says on the bottom of the page for other reviews that are not currently recommended. So Yelp is using their algorithm to, um, to choose, pick and choose what ones are showing. And most people don't know that you can expand it. So if those first two are not good ones, that can really hurt your business. Um, this filter was put in place and its intention was to protect businesses, but because it's automated, it makes a lot of mistakes like filtering real legitimate reviews. So just keep an eye on your page. All right, let's talk about bad reviews. Um, it's inevitable. You probably will get at least one bad review. I remember when um, I was working for my husband's construction company, um, he had great, great Yelp reviews, and then we just got one negative review. And of course, it was a Yelp elite reviewer, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so hers ranked higher than anyone else's, and it was a one star, and it was completely her fault, the issue. Um, and it, it was just, it tanked his reviews and it tanked his star rating. And I contacted her many times to try and see if she would update it because my husband went back. He like fixed the issue. She was totally fine and she would never update it. So negative reviews will happen. What do you do about them? First, don't ignore them. Second, take time to cool down. So Yelp has a lot of small business entrepreneurs on this platform and we tend to get very passionate about our business and very pissed off when people are not nice about it. So make sure to remember before you fire off um, in a response to a negative review that you take time to cool down or before your boss or your owner does, get them away from the computer and distract them so they can cool down. Don't take it personally hear them out. A lot of times what I've found if you've been in customer service is that most of the times these people just want to be heard. So if you hear them out, it can calm them down pretty quickly so then you can get to actually resolving the issue. Um, thank them for taking the time to give you feedback. That's a tough one when it's negative. Um, don't be accusatory. Uh, if they have a valid point, own it, apologize for it, and fix it. I'm reading... Um, the book by Bob Iger right now, who's the CEO of Disney. And one of his big things is to own up to your mistakes. And I think that's really valid and it earns you more respect than if you try to cover it up or ignore it. Ask them for another chance to serve them. Discount free, give them something that will incentivize them to come back and um, give you a chance to make it right. I actually used to go to a car wash and I would went there for years and years and loved it. Um, they changed ownership. I went there one time when there were new owners. It was terrible. I ripped them a new one on Yelp. They contacted me directly, asked me to come back, told me the situation that they were new and they're trying to get on their feet and there's gonna be more improvements. I went back a few months later. They were really good. I updated my review. 
Um, let's see, Yelp rarely removes negative reviews for any reason, so it's best to respond to them, giving your side of the story and apologizing. And remember, clients aren't necessarily reading the bad reviews. They are looking to see how you respond to them. And I think people understand in this day and age that you're going to get a pissed off customer somewhere. All right, so Yelp has a, a few cool special features, some of which they just enacted this past year um, that will help businesses out. And the first thing that they did, this is not a new one, but this is probably one of the biggest ones, is they have a group of Yelp Elite. So it's called the Yelp Elite Squad. I don't know if any of you are part of it. And it's Yelp's way of recognizing people who are active in their community. Um, your elite worthiness is based on a number of things, including well-written reviews, high-quality photos, a detailed personal profile, and a history of complying with Yelp's terms and conditions. You can identify a Yelp elite by the colored badges on their profile pages. If they have a gold badge, they've been elite for five or more years. If they have a black badge, they've been elite for ten or more years. So in addition to re receiving a shiny badge on their profile, members are also invited to attend exclusive events with other locals in the community. These behind-the-scenes looks at top-rated businesses often include interacting with the business owners, hearing their unique stories, and getting free food and drinks. So here's the key thing. Notice if you have elite customers, Yelp elite customers, and make sure they're happy because their reviews hold more weight than the average review. I told you about my husband and the um, Yelp elite person that tanked his reviews and they definitely, their reviews hold more weight than the average person's reviews on your page. Uh, one of the cool things that just came about last year is uh, Yelp verified license badges. So this is really good when it comes to service providers and anything that needs to be licensed, any service. Um, so contractors, plumbers, movers, estheticians, childcare, any of these services that can um, have a licensing component to it. Now you can show that you are licensed and essentially you have like a verified check mark by your name. To be eligible for a Yelp verified license badge, a business must have a valid trade license to perform their advertised service within the state that they serve. To become verified, a business must apply through Yelp, which manually verifies each license. The product is currently available for $1 a day to qualified businesses within specified categories in certain states, and it will continue to roll out to new states and categories over time. So, this is a verified badge, essentially, that you are licensed and you're in good standing. However, there is a cost to it, so it is available for $1 a day. So this is where they're starting to add to how they monetize their platform. Now they're starting to charge people for these cool features. The next feature is the portfolio feature. For, bleh, portfolio feature. And it's just like what it sounds. It's a way for certain types of businesses to highlight actual projects they've completed with photos, descriptions, and pricing. So this is great for like a contractor, a painter, a home remodeler. Um, portfolio gives businesses a way to build consumer trust and attract new clients by letting them showcase the different kinds of projects they work on. This helps to set expectations with consumers and get more relevant inquiries. Portfolios are also a paid feature and they go for about $2 a day. And finally, we have business highlights. So with business highlights, a business can choose up to six badges to showcase which, what makes it unique including two badges that will appear in Yelp's search results. There are more than 30 highlights to choose from, such as vegan friendly, satisfaction guaranteed, number of years in business, and more. Business highlights also cost $2 a day or $1 a day for businesses who also purchase search ads. So again, they are expanding their features for business owners and then monetizing them by charging for them. So a couple other tips and tricks just to um, kind of round out this uh, lecture on Yelp. First, use analytics. They have analytics as well. Um, notice how many people clicked on your business, how many people use the map, what's the referral traffic, where are people coming from, who took advantage of your deals, and what your customer demographics are. Consistency is key, so make sure you create a routine. Um, click every few days for new reviews and respond accordingly. 
uh, create special promos for Yelp users so that they can um, have an incentive to come in and continue to come in. It also creates like a VIP special like feeling experience. Offer a check-in deal on Yelp. My esthetician does this. Uh, turn on their request a quote tool. This helps you kind of work um, the sales funnel with your business where you can get them a quote. Uh, find your routine, I just mentioned. Um, be consistent. And consider advertising. So uh, again, uh, local business advertising on Yelp accounts for 85% of Yelp's revenue. Um, in order to advertise, you must have a three-star rating or higher. Uh, advertising also provides you with marketing services and an upgraded homepage and advertisers can get an account manager to optimize results. The bonus of a real person there to help you with unfair reviews is really, really huge on Yelp. So that is a very big incentive to advertise. Well, that's all folks. It's all with Yelp and that's all with this class. Um, the next thing that's happening is your final. I'll put up all the information on Beachboard in the next couple days. I will have one more extra credit opportunity since I usually do a final review with you guys um, that gives the winning team extra credit. I'm going to try and replicate that digitally. Um, so keep your eye out on Beachboard for all that information. Um, again, I just wanted to say how great it has been to teach you guys this semester. I'm sorry it couldn't be in person the whole time. Um, I will miss you and I hope you got a lot from this class and I appreciate the time you've put into it and the extra work you've put into it and I hope to see you all in person um, in the fall semester or at graduation. So again, congratulations, good luck with finals, you guys will do great and I'll see you soon.